What happens when one of the fastest fighter jets in the world suddenly runs out of lift? Today, we're pushing the MiG-21 to its limits to see what stalling really means in a fighter aircraft. And trust me, a stall in a MiG-21 isn't like what you've learned in a civilian trainer. It's sharper, more dangerous, and completely unforgiving. Without wasting more time, let's dive straight into the cockpit for takeoff. We're lined up on the runway, centered, nose wheel straight. Controls checked, full and free movement. Krinsk, in field, one, request takeoff. Takeoff clearance obtained. Applying full power now, engine gauges are within limits. Up and ahead clear, releasing brakes. At the start, I maintain direction with brakes, and as the speed builds, I transition to using the rudders. Passing 200 kilometers per hour, I pull the nose up and hold the attitude. At 310, we're airborne. Climbing out, once the aircraft is above 15 meters with a positive rate of climb, I retract the landing gears and check for three red lights. Crossing 100 meters flaps up. Landing gear lever set neutral. I'll continue climbing now to 6,000 meters where we'll set up for the stall demonstration. But before starting the maneuver, let's first talk about what a stall actually means. In the simplest terms, a stall happens when the wing's angle of attack goes beyond its critical limit. When this happens, the airflow separates, lift collapses, and the aircraft can no longer maintain altitude or control. Now let's take a step back and explain lift in a bit more detail. Lift is the upward force that allows an aircraft to fly. It's created because of the way air flows around the wings. As the wing moves forward, air flows faster over the curved top surface and slower underneath. This difference in speed creates lower pressure above the wing and higher pressure below it, producing lift. But here's the key point. Lift isn't unlimited. It depends on three main things. Airspeed, wing shape, and the angle of attack. At normal angles, the airflow stays attached smoothly over the wing and lift is steady. But if the angle of attack gets too steep, the smooth airflow breaks away and the wing simply can't generate enough lift. That's when the stall occurs. So remember this, lift keeps you in the air. Angle of attack controls how much lift you can generate. And when you exceed the critical angle of attack, lift disappears, no matter your speed, altitude, or engine power. That's the aerodynamic reality we're about to see firsthand in this stall demonstration. I'm still climbing now. I'll level off the aircraft at 7,000 meters and continue flying to the edge of the sector. That means when the RSBN distance indicator reaches 50 kilometers. To be honest, in real life, I haven't performed a clean stall in the MiG-21. But during my advanced fighter pilot training, we did practice full stalls in trainer aircraft. That's why I wanted to try it out here in DCS and share the experience with you, just like I once did in the Hawk. For this demonstration, I'll perform two stalls. In the first one, I'll use the speed brakes to reduce speed quickly. Here's the plan. At the edge of the sector, I'll carry out a 45 degree flat turn. Halfway through that turn, I'll bring the throttle back to idle and extend the speed brakes. Then I'll maintain level flight to allow the speed to bleed off gradually. Before starting, I'll carry out Hazelow checks. Height, about 5,000 meters. Aircraft, clean, gears up, flaps up, speed brakes in. Security, no loose articles in the cockpit. Engine, gauges all within limits. Location, clear of populated areas, high ground, birds, and cloud. Orientation, on heading 330, 48 kilometers from the runway. Now approaching 50 kilometers, I'll initiate the turn, rolling into a 45 degree bank, balancing with back pressure. I'm not going to go into explaining how to perform a flat turn here, because I've already covered all of that in detail in one of my previous videos. If you're interested in learning the step-by-step -step process and the techniques involved, make sure to check out that video. It goes in depth and will give you a clear understanding of flat turns. One more thing, don't try this in real life. Every aircraft has its own standard procedures and they can differ significantly from one plane to another. Always stick to the official procedures. Use this video only as a guide and before attempting anything, discuss it with your personal instructor and follow their instructions. Halfway through the turn, 
throttle back to idle, speed brakes out. I'll maintain level now. Watch closely. Keep your eyes on the airspeed indicator and the angle of attack indicator. Notice the changes. This yellow zone shows the buffeting angle of attack, and the red zone marks the critical angle of attack. You should always avoid exceeding this red zone. Look at the airspeed now. The aircraft is beginning to shake. I'm maintaining level flight right now. Since I don't have enough thrust, all I can do is increase the angle of attack. Notice how quickly the aircraft responds. Now, even though I'm pulling back on the stick, I can no longer maintain level flight. To regain speed, the aircraft automatically drops its nose, a feature of its stable design that provides additional stability. This is the stall. Now I'm going to show you the stall from an external view. This is exactly what happens during a stall. Watch closely how far I pull the nose back and pay attention to how the aircraft responds. You'll be able to see the sudden change in attitude and how the plane naturally reacts to prevent loss of control. In the previous stall demonstration, you might have missed some details because the speed decreased so rapidly due to the speed brakes. To give you a clearer understanding of what really happens during a stall, I'm going to perform another demonstration, this time without using the speed brakes. Currently, I'm at 5,000 meters altitude and 600 kilometers per hour. I've zoomed out the cockpit view so you can clearly see the movement of the stick and how the aircraft responds. I'll slowly bring the throttle back to idle while trying to maintain level flight. Since there isn't enough thrust to keep level, the only control I have left is increasing the angle of attack. Watch closely how the speed drops as I do this. Here's a critical point to remember. Stalls aren't limited to low speeds. They can happen at any speed and anywhere within the flight envelope. If the aircraft reaches its critical angle of attack, a stall will occur, even at high speed. This is known as a high-speed stall. That's why it's absolutely essential to always fly within the safe limits defined by the manufacturer. Understanding these limits and how the aircraft behaves near the critical angle of attack is key to preventing stalls and maintaining full control at all times. Keep your eyes on the airspeed indicator and the angle of attack indicator. Notice how quickly the speed drops and how rapidly the angle of attack changes. Also, glance at the stick to see the aircraft's response. Take note of the stalling speed here. If you're flying DCS, you can try this out in your own aircraft model and see how it behaves. Think about it. Do you prefer a higher stalling speed or a lower one for an aircraft? Drop a comment below with your thoughts. When the aircraft is about to stall, you can see the warning lights activate. Even though I'm pulling back on the stick, the nose drops down and the aircraft starts to judder. The last recorded speed here was 240 kilometers per hour. I hope that helps you understand the behavior. Let's also take a look at it from the outside view. Now you can see why most people say takeoff and landing are the most critical phases of flight. During these phases, aircraft are flying at low speeds, which makes stalling possible very quickly. The problem is that at low altitude, there isn't enough height to recover safely. That's why we need to be extra careful during takeoff and landing. In this demonstration, I didn't extend the speed brakes, so the rate of speed reduction is relatively low. But in real takeoff and landing scenarios, landing gear, flaps, and sometimes speed brakes are extended. This causes speed and altitude to drop much more quickly, which is why managing airspeed is so critical. Nouveau Rossis, in field, one, inbound. Stalling is a very critical situation. <laughs> you can even enter a spin if inappropriate inputs are applied. That's why I climbed to 5,000 meters to safely perform this demonstration. For your additional knowledge, we also practice a maneuver called simulated approach stall and recovery. In this exercise, we extend the landing gear and flaps to simulate being on final approach and then determine the stalling speed for that configuration. This allows us to know the speed at which a stall could occur during approach and maintain a safe margin above it. For example, if you hit a bird in the air and your aircraft is still controllable, you may not need to eject. But before landing, it's essential to perform a simulated approach stall and recovery because extending flaps and gear changes the aerodynamics of the aircraft. 
After practicing this, you can safely maintain 10 to 20 kilometers per hour above the stall speed and land safely. However, if the aircraft exceeds the maximum touchdown speed, it becomes unsafe to land and ejection may be necessary. I directly joined the downwind leg for landing. Now we're approaching 45 degrees to the runway, so it's time to start the base turn. Always maintain the correct speed. Don't let it drop below 400 kilometers per hour during this phase. If it does, it will take extra time and effort to regain. Keep an eye on the angle of attack indicator and notice how it changes. Now that we've extended the landing gear and flaps, the aircraft is more vulnerable. Our altitude is also low, so if we were to stall here, recovery might not be guaranteed. The best strategy is to prevent a stall from happening in the first place. When banking, one wing goes downward and the other upward, causing sudden changes in lift. This makes the angle of attack vary accordingly. As long as you keep the angle of attack below the red zone, you're safe. Use this indicator consistently. It's a vital tool. From my experience, every fighter aircraft has this indicator, either in the HUD or as a physical instrument. Today, I'll continue the approach while maintaining a constant speed of 400 kilometers per hour for a safe landing. I hope you've learned something new today. I really appreciate all your comments and make sure to reply to everyone. To be honest, I've wanted to be a pilot since childhood. Talking to experienced pilots and hearing their stories inspired me to pursue this dream. Becoming a fighter pilot isn't something everyone can do, but my goal is to give insight for those who love jets, aspire to become pilots, or enjoy flight simulators. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any suggestions or requests, leave a comment below. Safe flights and happy landings.